Hi guys, Gadget Girl Kylie here, and welcome back to my Let's Play walkthrough of Soul Sacrifice Delta. And on this episode, it's purely going to be a storyline episode, so there's not going to be any combat. Now, I have unlocked this new section of storyline within Sanctuarium Allies. The survivors open, the survivors continued, and the survivors closed. Now, how I unlocked this was basically you need to have done the memories remain, revised the memories remain, and completed all of these chapters, and then that section will unlock in Sanctuarium. So let's go back and listen to the new storyline. The survivor's opening. These are the memories of the survivor. It is my duty to tell of the cataclysm witnessed by mankind. That a cursed sorcerer would bring about the end of the world. No one believed this prophecy, save the heretics of Grimm. But one day, all would see the man who would destroy the world. They say his right arm was covered with countless wicked eyes. Now, though he was taken for a man, at times his mask would slip. Should the mood take him, he would take the vile form of a dragon. And hordes of monsters would trail in his great shadow. What people in such times could think to bicker with one another? Avalon, Sanctuarium, Grim. Their three leaders held a meeting. Terwin, Grim's hierarch, disclosed her plan and asked the others aid. The cornerstone of her plan was to be Persaphius's Ars Magica. She entreated him for it, yet Persaphius would only shake his head. No. The old man had no time for Grimm's machinations. Negotiations broke down, and the meeting ended a fruitless endeavor. Lenixian the leader of Sanctuarium, spoke not a word for the duration of the meeting. She felt loss. Was preaching salvation really the thing to do in these grave times? The hordes of monsters had only grown, and the world was in chaos. One's reason becomes increasingly frail as terror encroaches. And unshackled from reason, man let the darkness wash over him. A vicious cycle followed. The panic produced yet more monsters, which in turn fanned the flames of fear. Not even Sanctuarium could escape from this terrible vortex. Followers of the faith started turning into monsters themselves. Burdened by their cruel fate, those that had been saved began to question their faith. All the Nixian could preach to her flock was the message of prayer. That even in such dire times, one must not give in to selfishness. It was a beautiful message, but one that fell on deaf ears. One that couldn't placate the cries for a clear road to salvation. Eventually, voices of criticism coming from Sanctuarium's inner circle came to the fore, saying kindness wouldn't save them. Members of the flock abandoned Sanctuarium in droves. Only a handful remained. Those few heeded Lenixian's words and continued to pray fervently. Then, without warning, an eerie stillness settled over the world. 
the monsters vanished. The miasma that choked the skies lifted. Revealing a gentle smile, Lenixian declared to her followers that their prayers had been heard. The devout few were jubilant. However, there was one man who remained unmoved. Egress, Lenixian's number one. The man once known as the Mage Slayer. Without hesitation, he asserted, It must be a trap. Lenixian admonished him. You are far too anxious, Egress. But Egress was not convinced. The world is not so kind as to let mere prayer save us. Such objections were only natural for a man of his disposition. But to the people of Sanctuarium, his words were anathema. I am aware the world is cruel. The disappointments of reality were in fact Sanctuarium's lifeblood, for it was ideals that they offered. That was the first time Lenixian had ever rebuked her friend. And so she excommunicated Egress from Sanctuarium. He left without a word, his expression completely occluded by the scars of sacrifice that he bore. Whoa, intense. So Egress has been excommunicated. I wonder if we'll get to learn more about what Egress will do now and also more about Lenixian. The survivors continued. How long had it been since Egress left? The world around Lenixian crumbled. The azure skies overhead felt no more real than a canopy. The husks of dreams rained down. When she awoke, Lenixian realized what had happened and despaired. The world had not been saved by prayer. It was Turwin's scheme. Her plan to have mankind share a world of dreams. The illusion conjured up by Grimm offered only a fleeting peace. It was for naught. The fires yet raged on, and monsters still roamed. Egress's words pierced Lenixian's heart through. The world is not so kind as to let mere prayer save us. Reality hounded the idealist savior all the more furiously. All the Nixian could do was watch, watch, as those dear to her became monsters. The staunchest followers who had stayed by her side, they would all give in, becoming monsters themselves. They could not survive without the Nixian, buffeted by fear. Lenixian's words were their only respite. That all-consuming dependency was the trigger for their descent. Dread lurked in Lenixian's heart. She did not realize it herself, but to her obsessive followers it was all too obvious, and it spread. Mere reverence for Lenixian was not enough for them to cope. In the depths of their despair, they wanted to have Lenixian herself, their only sanctuary. They began to worship her. They believed that by melding with Lenixian, their one respite, their fears would be dispelled. And so the monsters attacked her to sacrifice and absorb her. Have I failed them? Perhaps it had all been wishful thinking in the face of such horrors. Her ideals rang hollow. Certainly in no state to preach ideals. With the end of the world at hand, what use would her lofty ideas be? Darkness began to cloud her mind.
And then the white wind came, as if to dispel this dark haze. A sacrifice scarred man, in white. It was the former mage slayer, the man Lenixian spurned. Egress, holding back Lenixian. Egress faced the monsters in her stead. I have been cast out. I should be the one to join this slaughter. Oh, Egress, so valiant. He was no longer of Sanctuary, and so, no matter what he did, it would never sully Lenixian's ideals. It was as if his words hid this appeal to Lenixian. Or had his dispute with her all been a ruse from the start? Perhaps he'd anticipated this and came to assume the burden of sin. Egress let loose the bloodlust that had lain dormant in his broken body. As if it were his calling, he said to her, I shall assume the mantle of the Mage Slayer once more. Oh, I've just got chills. A ghastly bloodbath ensued. Egress turned to Lenixian and spoke again. It matters little to me how stained in blood I may become. But you must not follow my path. Cry out the song of salvation. The heavy scarlet of his victim's blood seeped through his robes. You have walked a path paved with dreams. Reality is less forgiving. Yet, without ideals, this world is no more than a living hell. Your path has brought light to the lives of many. Just as I was shown the light, when I was a monster. The battle that had unfolded was worthy of the Mage Slayer's name. Felling and sacrificing his foes one after the other, he tore through the monster's ranks. And he paid the price for his sorcery with his tattered body. He knew all too well what end his actions would bring. His humanity began to wane, but his resolve had been steeled. He would take his own life before he became a monster. Having offered his heart, from his mouth he drew the great blade his sacrifice had summoned, Excalibur. It is said that the rite normally produces a dark crimson glow. But the light given off by Egress shone a pale white, a pallid glow ensconced the accursed blade. Was this the spirit of Egress himself? I'd like to think so. Lenixian ran to Egress's side and cradled him in her arms. I am a sinner, a murderer, a monster born of foolishness. Yet, despite that, you absolved me, a monster of my sins, to those you not let your light be sullied by sin. Lenixian gripped Egress's sacrifice-worn hand tightly. I do not want to see you stained with blood, even if the world ends. If rancor consumes it all, do not fall to sin like me not you 
Lenixia nodded and, stifling her tears, said, You are pure now. You needn't let past sins weigh upon you anymore. Oh my god, it's so sad. The blood-stained path of the Mage Slayer came to its end. In his final words, he spoke thus. Egress, oh, you are a hero. You've redeemed yourself in the end there. You've saved Linuxian and all your sins have been purged. The survivors closing. The last of the monsters felled by the Black Rite gave a low groan and shed its monstrous form. It was a man. And now the sole survivor of the Sanctuarium flock. Lenixian rose and approached him. Aware of his sin, the man's eyes welled up with tears. Forgive me. It was Lenixian who apologized. I should have done more to give you hope. Forgive me. The man wept. His tears glistened in the light. But what light did they reflect? The two were illuminated by a brilliance radiating from above. Lenixian gazed upwards and saw the white chalice. Only the cruelest mind could devise such a terrible artifact. As if waiting for this moment, it whispered its temptations. Should you wish that the lives of your allies be restored, offer me the life of your companion. Lenixian could detect the intent behind those words. The cruel intent to distill mankind down to its ugliest element. Her mind was free from doubt. You must never lose your way, even in a ruined world. Egress's words spurred her on. You cannot grant my wish, Chalice. Her wish was to change this world, where one could sacrifice another. Yet, the chalice did not respond. There was an eerie stillness. The man with Lenixian was also gazing at the chalice. Does he see it too? The man could also hear the voice of the sacred chalice. He had heard its offer too. The man wore an expression of bewilderment. And with that, she called the man's name. Preto Kamlan. She seemed pleased somehow, glad that she could say these words. I forgive you, even if you sacrifice me. She could not let the fear of death shake her faith, nor could she betray her followers. At world's end, one faces the true test of how one lives and how one dies. The path one walked is the only thing one can truly pass on. 
I forgive all the injustices of this world. Presso wept and cried out, and he pleaded contrition. By the time Lenixian clasped Presso's hand, the chalice had vanished. The world continues its slide into absolute chaos. The few remnants of humanity hide themselves away from the monsters. Meanwhile, the cursed sorcerer tightens his grip on the world. He sends magical creatures to snatch away the survivors and sacrifices them with cold nonchalance. Lenixian and Presso set out together in search of survivors. Slowly but surely, people begin to gather around her once again. The reborn sanctuarium becomes the last hope of humanity. Hidden from the monsters, those survivors cling to their lives. Lenixian. Her name is the soul light that peers through the cataclysm. These are the memories of the survivors of the end of the world. The memories of Lenixian and Presso, my mother and father. As the heir to her storied name, I offer these notes in gratitude and I dedicate them to all who have sung the Song of Salvation since. Oh, wow. So the narrator was the son of Lenixian and Presso. That's really cool. I'm so glad that Lenixian didn't die and Presso didn't sacrifice her. They both overcame the temptations of the chalice. Camland. I've heard this name before. Have you any idea where? Okay, I'm going to stop this episode here, guys. Um, on the next episode, I think I'm probably going to be taking on the new god form of Magusar. I'm going to do two videos for that, saving and sacrificing, and I'm also going to redo the original original Magasar form that was on Soul Sacrifice, saving and also sacrifice endings for that form as well. And then after that, I will be doing online gameplay. So don't forget to like, subscribe, favourite, share and comment. It really helps me out as a YouTuber. As always, thank you for watching, guys, and take it easy.